please save my daughter and bring her home. The family of a young Fernley woman pleading for help as the search enters day 10, what we know so far. Plus, county commissioner taking up a controversial election proposal in their meeting today. We'll break down what it would mean. We'll be making runs at record high temperatures Wednesday all the way through Saturday. Could touch 80 on Friday. Details straight ahead. And the Nevada DMV announces its rebranding. We'll take a look at some of the changes being made. News 4 at 4 starts now. This is News 4 at 4. This is life or death for a beautiful and fun and amazing sister, daughter, and friend. And good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Joe Hart. And I'm Shelby Sheehan. Welcome to News 4 at 4. Well, that was Naomi Irion's sister you just saw there pleading for help from the community. The family is calling on anyone who knows anything to please contact the police, no matter how little or insignificant it may seem. Well, it's now been 10 days since Naomi was taken from a Walmart parking lot in Fernley, and the family says they've received an outpouring of support from the community. News source Audrey Mayer is in Fernley now, where a candlelight vigil will be held tonight for Naomi. Audrey, I'm sure her family is desperate for answers right now. Yes, they are, Shelby. Both Naomi's family and law enforcement are urging any witnesses to come forward with any information. No tip is too big or too small. And police say there were numerous people and cars in this Walmart parking lot at the time Naomi disappeared. And they believe certain people in the public know more information, but for whatever reason, they are hesitant to come forward. A big concern for police and family is how close Naomi was to Interstate 80 when she was kidnapped. Kidnapped. So theoretically, she could be anywhere in the country by now. But Naomi's brother says the main area of concern is a 10 mile radius where highways 427 and 95 intersect. That's north of I-80 and east of the reservation. Law enforcement is searching for a 2020 or newer Chevrolet high country model truck in connection with Naomi's disappearance. Please save my daughter and bring her home, please. Anything, any little tiny bit of information, please call. I don't care if you think it's insignificant or if you need other people's approval. You need no one's approval before calling law enforcement. And remember, any tiny bit of information can help law enforcement get closer to finding Naomi. And remember, you can stay anonymous by calling Secret Witness. Coming up at 5, we speak one-on-one -on -one with Naomi's brother, Casey, about the citizen-led search efforts, search efforts that he is helping organize. Live in Fernley, Audrey Mayer, News 4, on your side. All right, just hopeful that something comes through soon here. Thanks so much, Audrey. Well, U.S. Park Rangers in Southern Nevada are looking for a missing Reno woman. You may remember when 64-year-old Gail Stewart was rescued near Alum Creek here in Reno last month. She was found stranded down a rocky and steep slope. Well, now she is missing again. She was last seen March 14th on the Lake Mead area down by Las Vegas. Officials say that she went out to take pictures near Hoover Dam and never returned to her car. It's a highly controversial plan to drastically change how elections are run in Washoe County. Some say it's needed. Others say it's costly and could be illegal. Ben Marjot is live outside the county complex, where after six hours, public comment is still going on. Ben. Shelby, it's really unprecedented. People started lining up to give public comment well before the meeting began. The county commission chambers filled up and then the overflow room filled up as well. Tensions were running high this morning as people waited to give their thoughts on Commissioner Jeannie Herman's election proposal. It's crap. <laughs> there was no massive voter fraud and this is just part of the Republican agenda across the United States to overthrow elections and to make it harder to vote. 
Here you can see just how many people showed up. By far the most packed public meeting I've covered in years. The plan, if you're not familiar, is from Republican Commissioner Gene Herman. It would require sheriff's deputies at all polling places. It would eliminate voting machines, switching to paper ballots only, and then requiring those ballots to all be counted by hand. Many of her supporters say it's needed for election integrity. They pointed to false and disproven claims of voter fraud in the 2020 election. Opponents also came out in force today saying it's voter suppression, that it would disproportionately affect minority communities and could be illegal since the state crea creates our election laws. As of just a few minutes ago, public comment was still going on, so commissioners haven't even had the chance to debate yet. Now, how many MAGA hats have you seen? How many Build Back Better hats have you seen? That observation would tell you that the majority of the people wanted Trump to be president. This racist, ableist voter, uh, resolution of voter suppression. This is a blatant and open attempt to restrict access to voting, which historically affects black, brown, and indigenous communities. County staff estimate that this would cost about $5 million of additional money per election. We're going to be out here continuing to cover the election proposal. They are expected to debate this at some point tonight, so check back in on our later shows here on News 4 for the very latest. Live at the Washington County Complex, Ben Marjan, News 4 on your side. All right, thanks so much, Ben. Well, another warm and sunny one out there today, and we are looking at possible record-breaking temperatures as the week continues. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Matt Monroe. And Matt, only sunshine out there today. Not yeah. a bad Tuesday. Not a bad Tuesday. This is amazing out there, Shelby. We should take the whole show outside today. That's what I say. Sunny and 67 out there right now. As you look right over the Truckee River and Coonsley Street, 66 in Carson City, Truckee 63, Fallon, Winnemucca, low to mid 60s for you too. Now we're still skiing out there. Can't forget about Mount Rose Ski Tahoe and base level still good at 32 to 74 inches. You can almost ski in shorts up there this week and then overnight tonight will be clear and chilly back in the upper 30s and lower 40s and then the heat is on near record high temperatures coming Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Show you all the numbers coming up in big weather just minutes away. All right, thanks so much, Matt. Well, crews are removing large rocks on Highway 50 up at Echo Summit this week. That area has seen three rock slides over the past few weeks. Here's some drone footage of the work that's going on. They're using hand tools and airbag devices to move large boulders down the slopes. It means there will be traffic delays today and Friday on the highway between Sacramento and South Lake Tahoe Highway 50. Cars are being rerouted through Johnson Pass Road just one way at a time, so slow going along there. Quite a process though. Watch out for lane and ramp closures tonight on I-80 and Sparks. NDOT is working to replace freeway travel time signs. The right lane of westbound I-80 will be closed overnight near Sparks Boulevard and Sparks Boulevard and Rock Boulevard on ramps will also be closed. Detours will be available and they will be back open at six o'clock in the morning. We're learning more about the man who caused a deadly car crash in Las Vegas in January, killing himself and eight other people. A toxicology report found Gary Robinson had alcohol, cocaine and PCP in his system on January 29th at the time of the crash. Police say he was driving 103 miles per hour when he slammed into a minivan. He and his passenger died along with seven people, all seven people in the minivan, including four children. Well, Nevada State Police wrapped up their most recent speeding campaign from February 25th through March 12th. Troopers pulled over more than 360 people. They gave out nearly 270 tickets for speeding and 63 for other violations. Speeding plays a role in a third of deadly crashes on Nevada roads every year. A nonprofit based in Virginia is honoring a fallen Washoe County Sheriff's deputy. Jared Arosi died February 17th from heart complications caused by COVID-19. To honor him, Point 27 sent engraved dog tag necklaces to the sheriff's office for his partner and fellow deputies. They also sent an engraved folded flag necklace to Arosi's parents. Now in late 2018, Point 27 began honoring every fallen officer along with their agencies and families. The Nevada DMV is rebranding. It's a four year, $114 million investment and improvements will be taking place over the next four years. Tomorrow they will introduce a new redesigned website, logo and overall brand. 
The announcement will take place virtually at 11 o'clock in the morning. For more information on how you can watch, you can go to our website, mynews4.com. Also happening tomorrow, Governor Sisolak is expected to sign an agreement to advance outdoor recreation opportunities throughout Nevada. According to the governor's office, the new shared stewardship agreement focuses on creating sustainable recreation opportunities. The announcement and signing is behind or being held, excuse me, right here in northern Nevada. We'll have coverage tomorrow right here on News 4. Registration now open for the Barton Health Foundation's Mother's Day Golf Classic. The event is happening on Sunday, May 8th at Edgewood Golf Course in State Line. The funds raised from the event go towards helping patients fighting cancer through Barton Oncology. The deadline to register is May 6th at noon, and you can buy tickets online at bartonhealth.org slash golf. It's day two of confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Katanjay Brown Jackson. What she had to say in response to questions about religion, that's coming up. Is the political fight over mask mandates over? I'm Christine Frizzell in Washington with a look at a shift in sentiment from both voters and lawmakers alike. Okay, today look at those views, outstanding blue skies, sunshine, mid to upper 60s, but it gets really warm tomorrow back in the upper 70s, full forecast straight ahead.